In the height of Cold War in the 1950s, Merkov Corporation implements a secret program to specifically train people for war with no family or any loved ones caring about them. People who would truly never be missed if they would ever happen to disappear. That's what we see in the beginning of the game with Merkov preying on the vulnerable with a homeless person who seems to have nothing, finding a flyer by Merkov posing this job opportunity as something that would change one's life, which turns out to be a nightmare with the new recruits being tortured mentally and physically to unimaginable levels, with Merkov seeing this as a way to create unbreakable and powerful human weapons. Just a little backstory on the fictional Merkov, it's the corporation involved with MK Ultra, a real-life experiment which involved poisoning the tap water with hallucinogenics in order to control the minds of the victims and studying the effects of religion on controlling people in an Indian reserve, but this corporation was most commonly known for creating the morphogenic engine, causing people under immense amount of pain and PTSD, going to a state of lucid dreaming and control an entity by the name of wall rider, a collection of nanites in order to create the ultimate weapon. Therefore, to oversimplify it, Merkov creates experimental weapons to further the cause of war. I made a video previously going over the story of the game, which in here I'll cover only the ending, so if you haven't watched the last video, I highly recommend you to do so to catch up with what's happened so far. These people with nothing to lose are referred to as reagents, the special agents who go through painful trials in order to reach a final trial labeled as Program X. This is the final trial which tests the reagents' limits before releasing them into the world in order to further the cause of Merkov, being an obedient, perfect weapon to fully submit themselves to Merkov's sinister goals. Sitting back on a shuttle which only takes one person at a time, being a solo trial this time around, the monitor with Dr. Hendrik Juliet Easterman shows up further, manipulating the test subjects before they release in order to test their capabilities. Despite Dr. Easterman referring to the released reagents agents as free, they will be anything but, as they will most likely be under close and careful observation consistently, being only used for Merkov purposes, having absolutely no life of their own. The final trial is labeled as farewell, taking place in a mansion. Here the subjects are instructed to deliver their new fabricated public and private records to the designated authorities in order to start their new lives as special agents. But this is not as simple as it seems, as the reagent is required to do so while being in a deadly trial faced with murderous and insane ex pups which are the unsuccessful previous experimented on subjects. After managing to deliver the new fabricated records for the reagent, having destroyed the real records, he gets tasked to run some errands which involve the words spider, eye, and lamb. After doing so, the reagent runs away from the ex pups to enter a door for employees only when a surreal event takes place, falling into an endless sea in the underground tunnels, then managing to walk on the water, reaching a bright source of light. As the reagent reaches the light, he passes out, reawakening in a high-class expensive hotel room located in Cuba. As he tries to make sense of it all to what truly happened and if he in fact is free now, he receives a phone call with Dr. Easterman on the other side of the line, reciting the three familiar words, spider, I, lamb, which causes the reagent to get foggy vision with veins taking over his vision when the discreet covered up Dr. Easterman shows up briefly before the reagent loses consciousness consciousness and blacks out. This reveals how the reagent is anything but free, being someone who has gone through immense pain and trauma to the point that the only way he copes is by being a brainwashed individual not having any control, letting the overpowering dominating Merkov take control. Therefore, the successful test subjects or reagents are the ones who go through so much pain and trauma while staying alive, which pushes them to their mental and physical limit, with Merkov claiming full control, essentially having special agents or weapons fully under their command. The three words seem to be the activation code for the agents to be controlled, with them recited quickly, submitting the will of the agents to Merkov. We get a good look on how this is done and what the reagents perceive in the last moments before losing control. Therefore, Merkov's plan has 
always been to control the reagents all along, not really caring about their welfare or well-being, testing their abilities to the limit, not caring if they really survive, lose their mind or anything else. To Mirkov, less than 1% success rate is more than enough to continue on their evil experimentation and as it appears, it seems that more than 99% of the test subjects die, lose their mind or become severely mutilated, unfit for any further tests, making them disposable, with only 1% or even less of the subjects overcoming all the trauma just to be put in the real world and completely controlled. Watching one of the trailers of the game, some flash Flashing images reveal the nature of the experiments by showcasing some top secret documents. It appears that Merkov carried on these experiments in collaboration with CIA, choosing 88 American citizens and over 20 non-US people with any nationality, religion, orientation, intelligence, age, and gender. This brings us to the reagents who happen to be these new test subjects pushed to the limit for the purposes of the new experiment. Merkov seems to have used the previous findings using a wide array of drugs and hallucinogenics in order to assess them, catalyze the optimal results in the experiments. Projects known as MK Ultra and Project Artichoke, an interrogation hypnosis experiment, which wanted to assess whether the subjects would involuntarily perform assassination. They also tested forced addiction and withdrawal using drugs such as morphine and LSD to also study the effects of these drugs to also produce amnesia and other vulnerable states to see how likely it is for subjects to be controlled. The game takes place in the height of those cruel experiments, 1950s, which has correlation to the real life events. You might ask why is the protagonist in Cuba? Well, according to evidence and claims, CIA made numerous attempts of assassinating Fidel Castro in the late 1950s and 1960s. At least eight cases of assassination attempts were proven to be led by USA, CIA, with many being well covered up. Something we can't tell for sure, however, is whether CIA manipulated and experimented on the individuals sent out to kill Fidel Castro and how does the game come to this conclusion. In 1963, during a motorcade, John F. Kennedy, the President of the United States, gets fatally shot by someone called Lee Harvey Oswald. Oswald, being questioned by press, mentions that he was not charged with the murder of Kennedy and that he was a patsy, a term used to describe people who are being taken advantage of. Well, I was uh, questioned by a judge, however, I uh, protested at that time that I was not allowed legal representation. Did you kill the president? No, I have not been charged with that. In fact, nobody has said that to me yet. Uh, the first thing I heard about it was when the newspaper reporters in the hall uh, asked me that question. You have been Nobody said what? Sir? You have been Nobody said what? Okay, man. Okay. okay. What did you do in Russia? There are many conspiracies surrounding this, especially with the peculiar events following the assassination and what followed afterwards. Oswald was killed a couple of days later, being shot only once to the stomach by a local club owner. His wife, a Russian-born whom he married and traveled back to United States with, testified against him in court, which had a lot of contradictions. She strangely receives an anonymous donation of $70,000 after her testimony at the court and later in her life. After she becomes a neutralized American citizen, she persists on saying Oswald was in fact innocent. The investigation also came to the conclusion that Oswald acted alone, but there was no indication whatsoever to why he would assassinate Kennedy. Oswald also had trouble in his childhood and was labeled mentally troubled, which seems as if he would be an ideal candidate for an inside job. This is part of the conspiracy theory that Kennedy's assassination was an inside job as he seemed to be wanting to expose the top secret cruel activities of CIA which would paint them in a very bad color. Following the theory, Oswald seems to have been an experimented on individual in order to become a sleeper agent, activated for certain assassination attempts. Although based on real life events, sleeper agents have been fictionalized to be unaware of their actions when activated by a 
code, usually in the form of recited words. However, this is heavily debated, with some evidence even leaning towards sleeper agents being actually unaware of their attempts. This seems to be the case as CIA did in fact perform the artichoke project, rendering the subject amnesiac by force-feeding them drugs such as LSD and morphine, wanting them to act in a state of amnesia unaware of their actions. Therefore, the story seems to be inspired by the unfortunately true cruel events where CIA tried to control test subjects to carry out unspeakable actions. That's it for this video folks, what are your thoughts and opinions about the ending of the story? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, you can stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host Dar, and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.